Just 60 seconds ago, Mount Semeru's peaceful slopes vanished behind a towering ash column. Scientists watched their monitors spike, realizing in real time this was no ordinary eruption. Villages downwind now face choking ash and invisible health threats, while a seething pyroclastic surge races down the valleys. Danger, for locals and for the world, is only beginning to unfold. Ash from Sumeru's summit surged upward, forming a dense gray column that punched through the morning sky. Satellite data captured the plume as it stretched northwest and north, its leading edge drifting beyond the crater's rim within minutes. The cloud's opacity increased rapidly, signaling a heavy load of volcanic particles suspended in the atmosphere. Remote sensing imagery revealed shifting wind patterns that bent the ash column at higher altitudes, steering it toward populated districts in Lumajong and Malang. Meteorological overlays tracked the plume's expansion, showing a widening band of fine ash, shadowing villages downwind. As the eruption intensified, the density of the cloud thickened, with satellite sensors registering a marked rise in reflectivity and particle concentration. This was not a diffuse haze. Ash was packed tightly enough to blot out sunlight and obscure mountain slopes from view. The directional shift of the cloud placed settlements along the northwest and northern flanks directly in its path. Villages that had only minutes before enjoyed clear skies now faced an advancing curtain of ash, visible on both satellite and ground-based cameras. The growing opacity indicated not just a visual threat, but a surge in internal volcanic pressure, as more ash and gases were forced out by the eruption's power. By the time the main column reached 2,000 meters above the summit, the ash had begun settling in arcs across fields and rooftops, carried by prevailing winds. Each new data frame showed the footprint of the hazard expanding outward, making clear that the eruption's reach extended far beyond the crater itself. Fine volcanic ash began settling across rooftops, fields, and open roads, carried by shifting winds into the heart of downwind communities. Within minutes, the air took on a dry, gritty texture, stinging the eyes and scratching at throats. Residents stepping outside felt the ash cling to their skin, causing itching and irritation, especially for children and those with sensitive skin. Medical advisories from the disaster agency described the particles as sharp-edged fragments, small enough to be inhaled deep into the lungs. Even a brief walk without protection left many coughing, eyes watering, and skin burning from the abrasive dust. Doctors and local health workers warned that breathing in volcanic ash could trigger asthma attacks, worsen chronic respiratory conditions, and lead to acute shortness of breath. For the elderly and those with heart or lung problems, exposure carried a real risk of serious complications. Authorities urged everyone to stay indoors, close all windows, and cover water sources to keep ash from contaminating supplies. Where N95 masks or cloth coverings were available, they became a first line of defense, distributed at health posts and village gathering points. Instructions spread quickly, wet cloths over mouths and noses, frequent washing, and immediate care for anyone showing signs of severe irritation or difficulty breathing. Farmers watched as a thin gray layer settled over rice paddies and vegetable plots, threatening to smother young plants and poison the soil. The ash not only endangered human health, but also put local food security at risk. Every hour the eruption continued, discomfort and anxiety grew as the invisible hazard in the air forced daily life to a halt and made urgent action unavoidable. A pyroclastic flow is a force of nature that leaves almost no chance for escape. When Sumeru's dome fractured, a superheated surge of volcanic gas, ash, and shattered rock burst from the crater, instantly accelerating down the steep valley slopes. Temperatures inside these flows often exceed 700 degrees Celsius, hot enough to carbonize anything in their path. The composition is a lethal mix, fine ash particles, jagged pumice, and invisible scorching gases. 
What makes these flows truly inescapable is their speed. On Sumeru, measurements and video analysis confirm velocities between 60 and 200 kilometers per hour, faster than any human can run, faster than most vehicles on rough terrain. The valley itself acts like a funnel. Steep walls and narrow channels focus the energy, forcing the flow to accelerate as it descends. Topographic studies show that even a small change in the valley's angle can double the speed of the current, turning a slow-moving surge into a wall of fire and debris. The Basuk Kobokan Valley, carved by centuries of eruptions, is a textbook example of this deadly physics. Once the flow enters the channel, it rides a cushion of hot gas, skimming over the ground with almost no friction. Escape routes vanish in seconds, the landscape transforms into a corridor of destruction, where the only warning is a low, rolling roar and a sky gone dark with ash. For anyone caught below the summit, the valley becomes a death trap, its shape and slope leaving no safe haven, no time to outrun what is coming. At 7.12, disaster management officers in East Java received word from the Volcano Monitoring Center. Evacuation orders were to be broadcast immediately. Sirens wailed across Kurakabokan and surrounding hamlets, echoing through the valleys as automated text alerts hit residents' phones. The warning was simple and stark. Leave now, do not wait. Within seconds, the first trails and roads filled with people. Some families had practiced this routine before, grabbing pre-packed bags with documents and water. Others stumbled out, still in pajamas, clutching children and calling for elderly neighbors. Volunteers from local search and rescue teams moved door to door, focusing first on homes marked for priority, residents with limited mobility, the sick, and the very old. In the chaos, neighbors carried those who could not walk, hoisting them onto motorcycles and makeshift carts, pushing through thickening ash and the sharp scent of sulfur. For many in the valley, the memory of 2021 was still raw. One resident, a mother in her 30s, described hearing the siren and feeling her heart race. She remembered the stories of those who waited too long. She counted the minutes as she led her family uphill, the roar of the eruption behind them. Local logs later confirmed that from the first siren to the moment the pyroclastic flow reached the edge of Curacobacan, the window for escape had been just 12 minutes. In that short span, hundreds managed to flee, but the margin for error was razor thin. Disaster agency officers prioritized the most vulnerable, coordinating with village heads by radio to track who had made it out. The urgency was absolute. Every minute spent deciding was a minute lost to the advancing flow. By the time the valley filled with choking ash, the only hope for survival had been to move without hesitation. Seismographs at the PVMBG Monitoring Center registered a sharp 40 millimeter spike, followed by a continuous vibration lasting 16 minutes and 40 seconds. For volcanologists, this combination is a rare and ominous warning. A senior PVMBG scientist described the reading as a clear sign of deep internal unrest evidence that magma was forcing its way upward, not just venting at the surface. The extended tremor meant the volcano's internal pressure was building, likely fed by days of heavy rain saturating the fractured summit and triggering rapid steam generation. This kind of data leaves little doubt. The system beneath Sumeru was destabilizing, and the risk of further explosive events was rising by the minute. Disaster planners at the East Java Emergency Agency released an updated hazard map as the eruption's footprint grew. The exclusion zone now covered everything within 2.5 kilometers of the crater, with strict evacuation orders for anyone living near the Kobokan, Kembar, Bong, and Sat rivers. Afternoon reports confirmed a fresh pyroclastic surge had traveled 7 kilometers down the Kobokan channel while the ash plume hovered 2,000 meters above the summit. Rainfall warnings added a new layer of danger. Lahars, thick volcanic mudflows, could sweep through river valleys with little warning, threatening homes and farmland well beyond the initial blast zone. 
The evolving map left no doubt. The danger would not stay confined to the mountain. Air traffic controllers across Southeast Asia received the red aviation alert as Samaru's ash column soared beyond 16 kilometers, intersecting major jet routes. A volcanic ash advisory center analyst confirmed the plume's rapid rise, prompting immediate rerouting of flights between Jakarta, Bali, and Australia. Airlines issued notices to air missions, and pilots diverted aircraft around the hazard, keeping international skies clear of volcanic ash. Right now, Samaru's threat is ongoing. Its ash cloud still disrupts airspace, and thousands remain displaced. As Indonesia faces over 120 active volcanoes, each eruption is a warning. The boundary between safety and disaster is razor thin, and it can shift in a single breath. Stay aware.